Real Virginia is proudly produced by the Virginia Farm Bureau Federation. Since 1926, Farm Bureau has been working to preserve Virginia farms and our rural heritage. Visit our website at vafb.com. everyone and welcome to Real Virginia, a show about Virginia agriculture and the people who produce all the wonderful products we enjoy, brought to you by the Virginia Farm Bureau. We'll meet Virginia's new Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry. Chef Maxwell has a summertime salad treat for us. And did you know you could vacation at a farm? It's a great way to get back to your roots this summer. Welcome back everyone. We're coming to you from Nelson County, Virginia at Kreiser Family Farm where summer is in full swing and so is their pick your own. And we're going to introduce you today to Virginia's fourth Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry, who was just recently appointed. On a beautiful warm summer day, Bettina Ring spent time chatting with agriculture leaders at the Virginia State University USDA Field Day at Randolph Farm. Back in January, Ring was promoted from head of the Virginia Department of Forestry to Secretary of Agriculture and Forestry by Governor Ralph Northam. She is the first woman to serve in that role and has stepped into it nicely. Well, I think it is important to recognize that uh, we need to make sure that we have diversity and inclusiveness in our workforce uh, across agriculture and forestry, the community, uh, all types of, of diversity. And I feel fortunate to be a woman serving in this role. So it's nice to see more women moving into leadership roles. And I feel fortunate to be here. I think it is important for us to be able to, to serve as role models and mentors for, for young women coming behind us. Ring, who replaced Basil Gooden, oversees the state's largest private industry, agriculture. The agriculture and forestry industries combine to provide more than 442,000 jobs in the Commonwealth and has a combined economic impact of more than $91 billion each year, according to the Weldon Cooper Center for Public Service at the University of Virginia. A Virginia Tech alum, she began her career with the Department of Forestry, working her way to deputy director before leaving to work in the nonprofit sector in Colorado. She returned to the East Coast and was a senior vice president of Family Forest at the American Forest Foundation in Washington. There, she oversaw the largest and oldest sustainable woodland program in the country. Ring was appointed Virginia State Forester in 2014 and credits her successful career to her upbringing in Craig County. Basically, I had a family that had a very strong land ethic and, and I just um, was very connected to the land from a very young age. And so I knew that that's what I wanted to do uh, with my career. At, at some point, I wanted to, to do all that I could to um, help steward and make sure we protected the land and the environment long term. Ring is well aware of the many challenges facing today's agricultural and forest producers. Changing markets, higher labor costs, lack of profitability, and loss of prime farmland to development are among them. She said she wants her legacy to be one of preserving the family farm in Virginia. There are things you know you want to do, um, you have a vision about how to move forward and goals and priorities, but you do have a limited time to accomplish that. And so working with and through others to make that happen, being very focused on what's important. And so for us in our secretariat, we're focused on economic development, we're focused on forest and farmland retention, and we're going to be focused on public health and education. How can we make sure that we retain forest land and farmland by giving the landowners the tools that will help them keep the land intact and keep that in forest and farmland and in the family if that's what they choose. What is her advice to other women interested in agriculture leadership? Follow your dreams, never give up on that. Believe that anything's possible. You can do anything you want to do in this world. And so have that, have that vision and stick to it. In her new role, Ring oversees three agencies, the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, the Department of Forestry, and the Virginia Racing Commission. But perhaps her most important role is to serve as an advocate and a promoter of Virginia agriculture and forestry both at home and overseas. 
The Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services has a cumbersome name because it has so many roles to fill. In addition to promoting Virginia farm products at home and overseas, VDAX administers food safety regulations, assists in inspecting grocery stores and food labels, regulates the use of pesticides in the Old Dominion, and leads the way in preventing major livestock disease outbreaks. It's the official state agency for inspecting weights and measures for consumer sales for everything from grocery stores to gasoline pumps. And the Consumer Protection Division regulates everything from charitable organizations to fantasy football websites. Like agriculture, it's an agency that touches the life of every Virginian. I'm Mark Viet. Coming up on In the Garden, we're going to talk about being careful when you prune plants with thorns. Stay with us. Farm Bureau is the insurance provider of choice for farmers. But did you know all Virginians can benefit? In fact, most of our members are not farmers. Members may take advantage of discounts on selected autos, trucks, mowers, and tractors on top of the many insurance offerings. Your $40 membership will easily pay for itself with their many savings options as well. Farm Bureau is made for Virginians. To learn more about the membership advantage, go to VAFB.com or visit your local Farm Bureau. This summer, conservation police officers and Virginia State Troopers are teaming up to save lives. Because we know the drunk boaters on the water become drunk drivers on the highway. Drunk boating is drunk driving. Alcohol use is a leading factor in fatal boating accidents, and it's directly to blame for one-third of our fatal accidents on our highways. Don't drink and drive. And don't drink and boat. Do your part to keep it a safe summer. Anyone who has worked or walked through a garden knows to watch out for thorns and thistles. Mark Viet has some tips today on avoiding those scratchy plants in the garden. An old-fashioned heirloom plant is known as flowering quince. And you'll see it, you know, on some of the older buildings because it was a commonly used plant as a foundation planting many, many years ago. It's not seen as much today, but it is becoming more popular. But when you're pruning plants like this that is filled with thorns, or your roses, which can be filled with thorns, you need to be careful. There is something called rose handler's disease. Uh, many people that commercially cut roses in this country and in another country are subject to it. There's a fungus that affects humans on the tips of the thorns. So when you get scratched or poked, um, there's a small chance, and I say small, but there's a small chance it can infect you. And it can infect your lymphatic system and you get these problems with your hands and other places on your body. And it takes quite a while to cure. It is a fungus called sporotrichosis. So, a couple things, keep in mind, when you're pruning quince, and this glove's probably not even heavy duty enough. This one's a little better. You want gloves that are resistant or impervious to thorns. You know, um, sometimes uh, paintball gun masks work really well. And sometimes they have outfits with gloves or ski gloves work very well. But you do want to have protective eyewear when you're pruning this. So make sure that you have good eyewear, good gloves, maybe two shirts or a thicker shirt, or you might want to use a uh, you know, long-handled pruner rather than a hand pruner, because you can reach in and prune this back. Sometimes you want to cut it all the way back, sometimes you just want to thin it out so it continually flowers for you. But again, it's filled with long thorns, so you got to be very careful that you don't get scratched. Uh, roses are very important too on how to prune those and I'll show you how to prune roses too. Knockout roses are pretty easy to take care of but one thing you're going to notice the thorns are pointed toward the roots so when you reach in like this ah it it catches you so I made a decision last year to prune this a little differently these two roses were exactly the same height so instead of reaching in which is a little more um, difficult without getting stuck by thorns. I just came in last year and cut this down to about 18 to 24 inches. And look how nice it's grown back. 
But the other option is to reach in and again with long pruners. And so you can come in and thin this out and trim it back. Try to trim back to little buds or branches just like this. And then you're going to have to reach in carefully and pull this out and just watch for your sleeves. And that's why I wear two layers or a thick shirt. This beautiful pink quince flowers a little taller on some of the taller stems. But one way to prune this is every four or five years, come in and prune those stems down to 18 inches and let these younger stems take over. Again, wear to protect the eyewear, clothes, face wear. Some of you may know this plant by a different name, quince jam or quince preserves and they produce, late in the season, a large fruit. Now this is kind of shriveled. It'll end up being about two or three times this size. And this particular type here is always loaded with fruit. And people make the tart quince jam or preserves. I will mention one other thing about this plant. The honeybees and the pollinators love it. Again, it's an old fashioned heirloom plant known as quince. It's easy to grow in a garden. I'm Mark Viette. Join me next time. For more garden tips, go to inthegardenradio.com. Summer peas and pesto sound like a delicious combination. Chef Max will think so, and he'll share his recipe next in the heart of the home. We have 37 parks across the Commonwealth. Every year, 10 million visitors enjoy 600 miles of trails from beaches to mountains. Hundreds of cabins and campsites, even yurts. We are Virginia State Parks. All right, so you guys ready to get out of here? Oh, we're getting pretty low on beers. You guys want to go fill up? All right, cool. Boating under the influence is illegal no matter where you boat. Law enforcement officers will be conducting heightened enforcement patrols during Operation Dry Water, looking for boaters who are boating under the influence. Alcohol is the leading contributing factor in recreational boating deaths. Stay safe, stay sober, never boat under the influence. To learn more about the dangers of boating under the influence, visit operationdrywater.org. Salad doesn't have to be just lettuce and tomatoes. There are plenty other vegetables you can use, and Chef John Maxwell has a recipe today using potatoes and pesto in the heart of the home. Hi, welcome to the heart of the home. I'm Chef John Maxwell. We're here in Doswell, Virginia at Meadow Hall in Meadow Event Park, and we're going to play with some great Virginia food. Every week we get a chance to play with some of Virginia's great produce and, and agricultural products. And today we've got a special feature. We've got potatoes. Summer potatoes are great from Virginia. We've got peas and beans and oh, all kinds of great stuff. We're going to be making a summer potato and pesto salad. It's wonderful. We're going to start out by taking some mint right, and some basil and putting it in this blender, all right, along with some hazelnuts and some cheese, some salt and pepper, and some garlic. Okay, now we're going to put the top back on it. Now we're going to go ahead and pulse this a couple of times. All right, now it's ready for the olive oil. I've got some great extra virgin olive oil here. Mm, mm, mm. 
That smells good. All right. Let me get a little bit of this out of the way and bring in my mixing bowl. I've got these new potatoes. I like to use multicolored if they're this small because I don't want to cut them and it makes a good look in the plate. Right. I'm going to put that on there. We're going to take some of this pesto. A little bit more pesto. We're going to add some olive oil. Now we're going to mix this up. Get it all mixed good so it's not too lumpy. All right. I'm going to take these strip, these are snow peas that I blanched, which means I dropped them down in boiling water long enough for them to begin to soften, pulled them up and dumped them into ice water to stop the cooking. So they're nice and green and tender and delightful. And I'm going to add this in there All right. and mix that around. All right. And I'm going to add some peas. These are nice, fresh garden peas. Okay, this produce is just coming in from the farms around Richmond, which is where I live. Uh, and they're coming from all over the state, but it's just popping. The season is just incredible. All right, so now I've got this plate, and I'm going to put potatoes and pea salad on this plate. Just about enough for this plate. Move this out of the way. I'm going to take a little bit of cheese and sprinkle it on the top. There's a little mint and a little basil as a garnish. And there we've got pea and bean potato salad with pesto. So join us next week on Heart of the Home, where we get to play with great Virginia food. Recipes from the Heart of the Home can be found on the Virginia Farm Bureau website at VAFB.com, as well as on Chef Maxwell's website at ChefJohnMaxwell.com. Potatoes are a summertime treat in Virginia. Planted early in the spring, most fresh potatoes are harvested for sale in fresh markets by no later than midsummer. Potatoes are grown on 762 farms across the Old Dominion, but are particularly popular with farmers on the eastern shore, where the rich, sandy soil is perfect for raising them. Virginia potatoes actually have a marketing advantage for a few weeks in the middle of the summer as the harvest season moves up the east coast. They're shipped to the northeast and even into Canada when other states have finished their season are just beginning. When Terrence grills burgers, he knows that just because they look finished on the outside doesn't mean they've reached a safe internal temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. For burgers and thin meats, the food thermometer should be inserted into the side of the food. Now he is sure his food has gotten hot enough to kill any bacteria present. For more information on using a food thermometer and proper cooking temperatures, visit foodsafety.gov. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Want to get back to your roots and experience farming for the weekend? Dave Miller reports there are a few places throughout Virginia that will allow you to visit with your family and try your hand at growing food. A new variety of agritourism is sprouting in Virginia. Instead of just visiting a pick-your-own farm for a part of a day, consumers can experience the full range of raising their own food. 
Just as urban residents connect at farmers markets, working at a farm can expand a consumer's connection to agriculture. Northern Neck farmers Lawrence and Cameron Latney are inviting volunteers to do just that. Yeah, so basically we uh, kind of had all that rain about 10 days ago, maybe two weeks ago, and we had all these weeds because, you know, being organic, we have to pull them by hand, so it's a lot of work and quickly get overwhelmed by that. So we were like, what can we do? And they were like, well, we've kind of been thinking about doing volunteer days. And I was like, well, let's get some volunteers. And I don't know, it was, it was kind of all of us kind of came up with it, but um, we'll get people out, do like a fish fry, have a good time, do a little bit of work. And it just kind of went from there. And Courtney put a message up on Facebook and it slowly started to gain interest. The Latney's farm, Blenheim Organic Gardens, is located just a mile from George Washington's birthplace and the Potomac River. Courtney Fishback works with the Latneys and uses social media to coordinate volunteer activities with members of the Blenheim Farm's community-supported agriculture group. A lot of people I feel like are drawn to that now is just to be outside more and because everybody's always cooped up and like all like squashed together and you get to enjoy, you get to hear the bird songs, you get to see the eagles like we uh, Westmoreland has such a big bald eagle like like so many bald eagles and so you get to listen to their calls and um, and then people get yeah and then people get to, we could converse we have our own like little podcast like we sit there and just talk about what's going on you know and you just sit there and just pull weeds. The volunteer program at the farm is just one way consumers can immerse themselves in agriculture. Other farms in the Old Dominion offer weekend getaways or longer, where visitors perform farm chores like feeding livestock, milking goats, riding horses, harvesting eggs, and picking fresh fruit and vegetables. The Latneys were confident that their customers would want to make the trip from Fredericksburg to get their hands dirty. Well, it's been a, um, an idea that uh, my son Cameron and a, and a few of his friends that work here have been talking about. And uh, it's an uh, opportunity to have fun on the farm at the same time that we sort of uh, uh, host people that are looking for a farm experience or looking for a, just to get away. We haven't done, this is sort of the first of that thing we've done, but we've had any number of people on the farm through the wolfing uh, group and that sort of uh, thing that have come out just to sample what a farm experience is like. Working on the farm, away from cell phones and constant interruptions, can have a real therapeutic effect on people. Fresh air, being close to nature, and helping crops thrive are a common experience for everyone who works with the land, farmer and consumer alike. I've never been here. I've been buying from this farm for about five or six years, so this is the first time I visited this farm, so in a volunteer capacity. so. I like it. This is the third time I'm here and it's very meditative. Uh, the last time I was out here I actually weeded four hours by myself and it was just very nice to just kind of not think about anything and just pull weeds. This day's activities at Blenheim Organic Gardens created both sweat and smiles as the work went on, weeding tomatoes and planting sunflower seedlings. The event became known as the weeding party with the promise of an evening fish fry to follow. After all, it's really about getting people out to the farm to enrich lives and see something compelling and new. In Westmoreland County, this is Dave Miller. That's going to do it for this edition of Real Virginia. We are so glad you could join us to celebrate the bounty Virginia has to offer. Whether it's in your home, your garden, or your landscape, we are proud to say that this is Real Virginia. So for everyone from the Virginia Farm Bureau, thanks for watching. Make it a good week. Chesapeake Bay